Okay, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, today we are playing hard-boiled detective. We're playing noir. Look at that big beautiful book of random tables. Uh, we're playing hard-boiled detective, which is a genre that we love ever since discovering Raymond Chandler, Dashiell Hammett, uh, that kind of deal. Uh, of course, the old movies with Humphrey Bogart, the 1940s style, 1920s through 1940s style, black mask detective fiction. We've read all of Raymond Chandler uh, and uh, <clears throat> love Philip Marlowe and love uh, the Continental Op stories by Hammett, that kind of thing. Uh, so what we did is we rolled up a random Private Eye, hard-boiled, tough, two-fisted Private Eye, James Carl Robbins, Jimmy Robbins. Uh, we rolled it up using this book, uh, The Book of Random Tables Noir by Matt Davids. Uh, there's lists of, lists of male names, uh, popular male names from the, from that era. Um... And there's movies and all kinds of other things from that era uh, that are invaluable for role-playing this particular genre. I'm not sure who that actress is. It almost looks like Marlena Dietrich, but it's probably not. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use loner rules. Uh, loner is seems to be the best, most... Uh, it's a little primitive. It's a little... It's very easy uh, to remember what's going on, and we do play fantasy and uh, those sorts of things so often that uh, coming back into the real world or the, uh, well, I guess it's not really the real world or the semi-real world uh, is, is, is good. And so Jimmy Carl Robbins is our, Jimmy Robbins is our sleuth, uh, the tags for loner. Uh, play. Sleuthing, good at fisticuffs, brawling, street savvy. Uh, he's a good liar and he's a good charmer. He owns a service revolver. He's done service in war. Dishonorable discharge. Why? Nobody knows. That's a shady past. His nemesis is a powerful Irish crime boss, a bookie perhaps, named Patty O'Reilly. How do you like that for a, uh, anyway, uh, his vices are drinking, bad temper, um, I'm guessing he's the guy that may not get a shower too often either. Uh, the first things first is what is he doing? He's got a private eye business perhaps that's failing on its feet, but one day, uh, let's see, uh, one day somebody comes in. Oh goodness, we didn't mean to do that. One day somebody comes into the business with a possible case for him. Let's see. We have our list of case ideas right here. Uh, that's a 100 D100 table. So, um, because we're so good at preparing for things, we don't actually have our D100. Uh, we don't actually have our D100 out. Let's pause this for a minute. Okay, and so uh, we have our book of case ideas. Let's say Mr. Robbins is Okay, where are we at here? We need our case ideas. There we go. Uh, case ideas, this is a D100 table, so let's go ahead, we're going to roll up, and we have 63. So case idea 63 is, a lawyer needs help finding an heiress who disappeared. Okay, does that sound, uh, does that sound about right for Mr. Robbins? Let's go ahead and see. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and ask the oracle. Uh, is our case idea here, is that, uh, is that going to work? And it looks like it will work. Okay, so the lawyer comes in. Um, actually, let's make it 
the sister of the heiress. So let's go ahead and we're going to journal down here uh, in our handy dandy little journal. We're going to go ahead and say um, one sultry L.A. morn sister of vanished heiress walks in the office. Jimmy tells his secretary who he can barely pay. Uh, okay, she rings him up on the on the buzzer or whatever, and he says, "Okay, Dolores, send her on in." And uh, so this dame with legs way up to a uh, chin comes in and she sits down, and you can almost hear the. Uh, sultry saxophone music in the background as she sits in the chair and it squeaks under her weight and Jimmy Robbins Jimmy Carl Robbins the broke defective detective no actually he's really good at what he does uh, he says so what can I do you for kid and she says oh oh Mr. Robbins it's terrible my sister she's gone I don't know where she went we think she ran off with the Anyway, <laughs> not to get overly dramatic, but let's see if we could come up with some names for those 50s cars. We need the names. We need the names. TV shows, no. Where are the names? There we go. Names. Female names number one and female names number two. So let's go ahead and get our D100 again since we're rolling up at random. Uh, 39. So name number, female name 39 is Harriet. Uh, I don't think she is a Harriet. Uh, let's go ahead and roll that one again. Nine forty-nine. Because this is not a Harriet. Harriet's the uh, Harriet's the cleaning lady. June. That's a little bit better. Middle name. Four seventy-four. Middle name seventy-four. June Matilda. June Matilda. And we got surnames. June. Matilda, 61, which, which list, which list, I guess right here we'll do 61, Wagner, June Wagner, June Wagner's sister has disappeared, Desdemona is the sister's name, anyway, uh, you gotta help me, Mr. Robbins, you gotta help me find her. Okay, so uh, he wants to know when was uh, when was she last seen? Where uh, do you have any idea uh, where her whereabouts were the last time? Uh, you have no idea where her whereabouts are at. Uh, what was she doing the last time you saw her? And uh, she says to him. Does she give him, but first let's decide if she gives him a cock and bull story or if she gives him the truth. Does June Matilda tell the truth about the whereabouts of her, of where she saw her sister last? Um, 56. 56. Oh, excuse me. No, she's not telling the truth, not 56. We're not rolling. She's not telling the truth. She's being evasive. She's hiding something, and he can tell that. Uh, he is good, good sleuthing. So, I mean, he's got it on his side that he can tell when somebody is telling a lie. So let's add an extra. Uh, in loner rules, we call these advantage dice, and then the other, the red dice, or the risk dice. Let's go ahead and see... Um, absolutely. Six. 
and 6 and 2. So we've got 1 on our twist table. Now when you're playing loner, uh, you do have twists. And when you're playing loner, we have what we call twists. Anytime, uh, anytime these two dice, uh, anytime the dice equal the same thing, uh, that is one on the twist counter. You start out with, uh, I believe, six luck that you can vanish. And also, uh, once you hit three twists, an unexpected event occurs. Um, so he can he knows that she is not being truthful with him. She's told him a story about her missing heiress sister. My feeling about this is uh, that this June Matilda is either being blackmailed or blackmailing uh, somebody else. There's something crooked going on beneath the surface. Let's go ahead. Uh, it, she is definitely involved in something crooked or shady herself, right? Um, ooh, we have yet a duel again. Uh, anytime you get two dice, two dual dice in loner, uh, that means a yes, and it's also yes and, and it's also another on the twist counter. Uh, three twists and an unexpected event occurs. Okay, so she's involved in something shady, and he can tell, but he's accepting her story uh, about her missing heiress sister. Uh, I was in contact with my sister up until three days ago. She was scared of something. Uh, she was talking crazy as if the world was going to end any day. I told her to relax. I told her to calm down. I said she could come back home for a while and stay. Uh, we could go to, uh, you know, we could go to our place, uh, special place, our special resort place, resort island. These are, these are high rollers. These are heiresses. Uh, so, you know, we could go, uh, we could take a cruise maybe, I told her, and she hung up abruptly, and then the house she was staying in, uh, renting, uh, we went there, we, myself and some other people went there, and we examined it, and uh, we looked it up and down, and it, the place was a wreck, the place was a disaster, and she wasn't there, she was gone as if she disappeared as if the wind picked her up and blew her away. Getting a little poetic, and Jimmy's thinking to himself, am I buying all this? And uh, let's, uh, let's do one more roll to see if he believes any of this story is, uh, it, he, something smells fishy. So, four, and uh, no, he's obviously not buying it. Okay, we're at 13 minutes, so we're going to... This is the first time we've ever played a noir-type uh, game like this uh, in this fashion, in this uh, particular play-setting genre. So it's been a little bit... Uh, probably a little rusty at this. We're going to go ahead and go. This is going to take forever and a day uh, to upload but with the Internet here the way that it is. But we're going to be doing uh, some more... Uh, playthroughs of various genres. We've got uh, a book that we're working on, of a huge book of random tables for every genre that you could imagine, uh, plus instructions on how to get started, different dice mechanics for uh, solo tabletop role-playing. All right, that's about all for today. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.